I was down in Branson several years ago and I run into a fellow by the name of Russ Hewitt. I'm going to give him a little bit of a commercial here before we get going. Uh, he's had a couple articles in the carving magazines. This one here is spring of 2010 and this one is 2007. He has been teaching for a long time. When I first met him I bought a tutorial down in Branson and it gives pretty well all the instructions you ever ever want. Uh, also he's got a website it's gougechipcarving.com and if you go into that site there's a lot of information and stuff in there. And some of this stuff is copyrighted and I thought well, man I better better check with him anyway. I called him last week and he said don't worry about it and he sent me a release email so we, we're good to go. This is pretty well freehand. <coughs> it's really simple. Uh, use a couple different chisels. Russ recommends four chisels, a half inch, a five sixteenths, a three sixteenth, and an eighth of an inch. You can use other chisels. Uh, the patterns that he uses <coughs> are set up for that. You can make your own patterns. Uh, there's a few things that you've got to have is one of them is a shellac and this seals the wood. It's just a spray shellac. Now he, he paints his on with a brush and he cuts it. But I found that if you put a couple coats of this on you've got to make sure that the wood is sealed otherwise it gets real splotchy. Uh, <coughs> he recommends 400 grit sandpaper. I use 280 and I get about the same effect. And then you, you, once you do your cow carving in order to get the fill in there that the dark color is a mixture of cocoa powder, regular cocoa powder and mineral oil. Uh, the white and the dark dark woods here that is that is uh, just plain uh, spackle that you'd buy in a store for filling a wall. Uh, if you want to add some color to it a little acrylic paint mixed into the spackle you can use blues and greens and reds and whatever color you want. Uh, you need scotch tape that's to put your pattern on whether you use a pattern to do something and you need a halfway heavy mallet and this mallet's been around for a while. And usually when I get my mallet wore out I go out in the wood pile and I find another piece of wood and it doesn't matter if it's got a check as long as it ain't too bad in the handle. And uh, the other thing <coughs> is you can do walking sticks. Now why I picked this piece of wood for a demo piece I got no idea. It's a little hard to hold and I got just a wedge cut out of a piece piece of two by four. If you're going to hold a six foot stick you probably need two of these and a piece of leather or something to set down in there so you don't mark the stick all up. Uh, you cannot use a pattern like this and wrap it around it doesn't come out right. So you cut an individual pattern out and stick it on with tape, square, we'll make a diamond. Uh, this is just freehand. These are freehand. So if you want to do do uh, that kind of work, that's that's easy to do. Hardwood is the best wood to use. Uh, cherry, walnut, maple, tulip, popple, mahogany. I don't recommend basswood. I've got a couple pieces here, and I can pass them around. Judy, I'm gonna pass these around. Here's a piece of basswood, and you, I've got it marked as crushed. And this is a piece of, piece of birch plywood. I don't recommend that either because it chips out. And you pass those around. A uh, tight grain looks better than a wild grain. If you use something like zebra wood, your carbon is not going to show up on it. Or if you use a piece of uh, cedar, this red romic cedar, it's not going to show up. I suppose probably if you put a color in here, it would probably look all right. I guess probably we can we can get started. I, I did a lot of these little crosses and they're kind of nice. If you get a thin enough piece of wood you can use them for bookmarks. Put a string on it. You can put a necklace holder on it or you can use them for Christmas ornaments. They're really fast and they're simple to do. Uh, the only pattern you got to have on that is two strips. I recommend an eighth inch strip of paper. And you put that on with uh, just a little bit of scotch tape. And when you get into carving it, you want to 
take and put the chisel so the bevel is away from you and when you when you hit it you want to make sure that the bevel is going straight down into the wood if you put it so that it's like this you're going to end up with a chip that isn't going to come out right so you always want to lean lean that towards you just a little bit <coughs> and normally these, these are not chip gouge with gouges they're just just marked with a, an indentation but you don't really need a pattern and you want to try to get by with just one whack at it always leaning the gouge towards you that way you can see where the pattern's at I don't know how good this is going to show up on TV or on the cameras but <coughs> I always start in the corners and work my way around you don't have to necessarily use this size gouge you can use a bigger one or a smaller one you can use more gouges different sizes than what Russ recommends depends on what you're going to do now he's he's got some grids made up that you can get in this tutorial and then you copy them on a copy machine and you can go quite a quite a ways with those most of those are set up the the honeycomb or the hexagon is set up for five sixteenths and this is makes a diamond that's that's a half inch gouge and this makes a spiral I'll get into that as soon as I get this this one done you want to get to the so you hit the whoops hit the mallet about the same every time so you get the depth where you want it and I think you'll find it this is a lot faster and a lot simpler than uh, doing it with a knife now I've got that far normally at that point you take off your tape and your pattern and then I'm going to take a mixture of cocoa powder and mineral oil for a filler you can use bry wax <coughs> uh, I found that this works pretty good the main thing is you want to make sure that the wood is sealed good and it's kind of messy you just stick your finger in it you just kind of slather it on filling up the chisel marks that you made and Russ uses a piece of wood I use a piece of foam it doesn't really make any difference I probably better wipe my finger off or I'll have it all over anyway <coughs> and you just wipe off the excess sometimes it takes several pieces of paper to get it cleaned off and there there's a, a finished cross now normally after you let this set for a few minutes you give it another coat of shellac over the top of it to seal in the, the filler and then after that you can put a urethane on we'll do a diamond basically that's a just a square and it's got a eighth of an inch gap in between it and you just do the same thing I just did this will make a diamond pattern and <coughs> you can do all sorts of freehand stuff too you don't necessarily have to use these patterns when you get into the vines and the flowers and that the snowflakes that's pretty much a do-it-yourself pattern whatever you want to do I guess the main thing is to try to make sure your corners come out even because if the corners don't come out even you you'll notice it when you put your filler on one thing I made here these are coasters I take a piece of clear plastic and cut it the size of whatever my 
coaster is, and then I lay that on the pattern paper to get get it centered the way it should be. Otherwise, if you don't don't have the pattern just right, you're going to get your pattern offset on your piece of wood. Now I've got the pattern pretty well laid out on the piece of wood. Next thing you get the tape off, and right away, once you take the tape off, you can see if you've got all the, the diamond cuts in it. So the next thing, the next thing is to sit there, and you cut out the chips. Uh, you always do it on the the convex side of it, and you lay your chisel into the corner, and you roll it around, and the chip should come out. <coughs> I'm going to pass, pass this around. Uh, one is finished and one of them isn't. This does this. And this goes with a 5 16 chisel. Now, if you notice on the pattern, I mark some spots in red. That means I want to hit those lines and I don't want to go out any farther. Otherwise, you don't get a <coughs> you don't get the the pattern like you want. You end up with maybe some odd shape or something on the outside edge. And this basically uses a little bit smaller chisel. And like I say, it depends on what size pattern you've got. You try to get all the ones that are going in one direction where you've got the piece you're working on in front of you. One thing about it, if you don't get to chip out completely in this, your filler will cover up your mistake. Now Russ has got a, <coughs> an alphabet in his tutorial. I've never tried it. But it, it doesn't look like it'd be too bad to do. What you don't want to do is take your pattern off before you get all of the vertical cuts in. And it's awful, awful hard to line back up. I've got a couple ornaments up here too that are just kind of free-handed. They make nice wall hangings or, like I say, Christmas tree ornaments. They're fairly fast to make. I guess the hardest part is making sure that you've got your wood sealed properly so you don't get down into the grain when you use your filler. Well, I think I got all of them. I'll go back to taking the tape off. Just I'll just fill this one in the way it is and I won't take the chips out. <coughs> you can fill it and then if you decide later, you can go back through and you can take the chips out and fill it again. It doesn't really make any difference. Normally, I would keep my mineral oil handy in case the stuff is starting to dry a little bit. Whoops, I missed one. You always tell when you miss one. As soon as you start putting the color in. Here's one with the chips out, and here's one with the chips left in. Pass it around. Here's another another one. This is on a piece of oak. <coughs> this will make snowflakes or flowers, whatever you want to call them. <coughs> and depending on where you put your pieces, and you can draw this up with just a cheap 
25 cent compass and then you put your radial lines on it you can start in the center or wherever you want to this is kind of a pattern that you make up as you go I would imagine that if you wanted to make the same one twice you'd have to have the piece that you're working on right in front of you so you know which ones that you were using. I've not had any problem using shellac as a sealer. A lot of my carvings I use shellac on them. Uh, gesso goes over it. Most of your acrylic paints go over it. And you can use any kind of varnish over the top of it. I like mine with a flat finish on it. So I use a matte spray after I'm all done. <coughs> now when you get this far, <coughs> you can swing it around, use a different, different size gouge. And by the way, these gouges are probably about an eight, seven or eight sweep on it. So if you get anything flatter than that, it doesn't give you a good pattern. If you go much heavier than that, you're, you're gonna be too, too deep. I'm not going to try to hook these all together. I'm just going to make a freehand pattern here. Get going on them and you do what, whatever feels like it's going to work out the way you want it for that particular piece. It's kind of nice if you get a ornament like that bell or that, that bigger cross and you want to make a hanging or wall hanging or an ornament out of it. I'm going to take this pattern piece off. Basically, what, I, what I've done is I've, I've just made a rosette, and I'm going to come back through, and I will take out, yeah, let's use the big one. I'm going to come back through, and we'll take out the chips. When you're taking the chips out, you want to try to space the cut about the same on all of them. Uh, sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch is probably probably what you want to do. Also, I've got another piece over here that's got pinwheels on it. And those pinwheels, you can mix them and match them. This is just a, a grid to make pinwheels and this this I've used a half inch half inch grid. I've already laid out the pinwheels and uh, I've made the vertical cuts in it and through the magic of television you got half of it done already. Uh, you run your pattern around the corner so you can do a picture frame. You could do two corners on a picture frame and then switch to something else. You can go back through like on that little, that little piece of uh, walking stick. I've just got some, just some straight cuts and then some gouges to come in there. Uh, I usually save all these little pieces because a lot of times if you're going to do walking sticks, you take that little square and you stick it on the walking stick. You don't want the whole pattern to go around there because normally your walking sticks are different sizes and stuff. So you never come out even on the other side. So you just stick the square on or the diamond or the hex and you, you cut that in and then you move it around as you go. I'll make a couple, couple cuts on this. And you always want to make all the cuts in one direction before you turn it around. I normally do the cross cuts first, get a little tear or something. You can usually cover it up when you make your, with the green cuts. The other thing I recommend that if you're going to do much of this, that you wrap your chisels with some duct tape or something 
after a while that gets hard on the fingers. I don't know how many people use their gouges and stuff. I'm always down like this and it, it gets a little tender after a while. Again, when you make your vertical cut, you want to make sure that the bevel is perpendicular to the surface of wood, not the front of the gouge. Otherwise, you get an undercut, and then when you go to take the chip out, it'll leave a bigger chip than what you want. Can you see it? I'll have Dan, I'll have Dan put the, the coloring on it, and you can probably see it better. These are vines, this being the vine, this being the flower, and this being the bud. It does, it does make a nice pattern. Uh, it's nice on boxes or just wall hangings, whatever you want to. You can make small ones, you can make big ones. This happens to be a kosher. Uh, you can make any, any kind of a pattern you want, okay? I just made an, an arc on there. You can make it go up and down. And I like to start out with a half inch, half inch chisel. And you turn it around and you come back around. And this way you pretty well got your pattern set where you want the lines to flow. The main thing when you're doing this is try to get your corner of your chisel into the last cut. Now that is all you need that line for. Okay. Uh, so now I've got that wavy line in there and the trick is to come back through and start making curls wherever you want your vine to run out. And this is where you cover up some of your mistakes because if you didn't have the, the pieces right the way they're supposed to be, you can kind of come in and blend it in with the next cut. Like I say, there's no real pattern to this. You just let the vines run where they want to. Right now you've got a vine with a whole bunch of squiggles in it. So now you come back through and you put in your flower petals. And you come back through and you take out a chip. Now, I'm not going to fill this one. This tutorial in here and it shows, it goes through all the stuff that I did, it shows you how to 
hold the chisel and everything. And then there's an alphabet and a bunch of other stuff. <coughs> there is one set of patterns. This is for the diamonds. This, this is for the hexagon. And there's a bunch of circles in here someplace. Different sizes and shapes. Uh, like I say, if you go into uh, gougechipcarving.com, Russ has got a telephone number and everything in there. He's an interesting fellow to talk to. He's real friendly, easy to get along with. This should be in his website. There's a bunch of different colored pictures and stuff in his website. It's quite a, quite a nice website to get into. And there's just all sorts of different, different things in there. Uh, if you happen to have these two carving issues, this one here is back in 2007, and it's pretty well got most of the stuff I just showed you. And here there's several, several pages. But like, like I say, you can make you can make boxes and everything else on them. It, it really, really is kind of a nice, nice. Uh, book if you've got it. It's one with a stupid looking bird on it. And this one here was just done this spring. And it shows how to make snowflakes and stuff. And this also tells how to make the, the filler and everything. <coughs>